If you like science but don't have time to read academic studies, we think you'll like this channel. Subscribe. We're glad you're here. Blood doping is used by athletes to improve endurance. It boosts the number of red blood cells in a person's bloodstream. Because these cells carry oxygen from the lungs to the muscles, doping makes your cardiovascular system more efficient. Athletes began using blood transfusions to dope in the 1970s. It was finally banned in the mid-1980s after the U.S. cycling team used the strategy to win gold in the 84 Los Angeles Olympic Games. Testing for this is difficult, but a method known as the Athlete Biological Passport has shown some promise. It monitors an athlete's biological markers like red blood cell count, hemoglobin, and reticulocyte percentage and establishes a baseline unique to them. Any meaningful deviations from the norm can indicate blood doping. The passport was rolled out in 2011 at the IAAF World Championships in South Korea. A new study published this week analyzed over 3,000 blood samples from that event and from the 2013 championship in Russia. It found that 18% of endurance athletes in those events likely used blood doping. A slightly higher portion of female athletes, 22%, cheated compared to male athletes, 15%. Individual countries were also analyzed, though the study reports them anonymously. 89% of a team known only as Country Q cheated in the 2011 games. Another, Country K, was near 50% for both events. Only two countries were completely clean. These results are interesting for a couple reasons. It surprised the scientists who expected the passport to reduce doping. The prevalence of cheating by male athletes actually increased 15% to 17% from 2011 to 2013. The overall 18% figure is also below what anonymous surveys of athletes have suggested in the past. Questionnaires given to athletes in 2011 suggested doping was more than twice as high. It could be that methods other than blood doping are used. Steroids, beta antagonists, and stimulants are not recognized by the passport, but they may be reasons for why athletes have answered yes in surveys. Athletes may also be confusing medical misuse from real, actual doping and may be admitting false positives. Still, blood doping is thought to be the most effective way to cheat at endurance events and it's what regulation should probably be focused on shutting down first. So, what do you think? Is it an issue that nearly one out of every five endurance athletes cheats? And who could Country Q be? Let us know in the comments below.